Welcome to week 9 of Monday Night Hockey. I'm Simon Mason and on tonight's show we've got all the action from a crucial clash towards the bottom of the table as Beeston hosted the University of Birmingham. Highlights from first versus second with Surbiton against Hampstead and Westminster. All the goals from Clifton Robinsons at home to Loughborough students. Struggling Bowden's trip to Holcombe and Buckingham against East Grinstead. In the men's Premier Division, we've got a couple of epic clashes as Surbiton look to continue their 100% record against Hampstead and Westminster, and third-placed Old Georgians travel to Holcombe. We've got all the goals from Reading's trip to Brooklyn's Manchester University, East Grinstead at home to Wimbledon, and the University of Exeter's crucial match against Beeston. Our first match this week is from BTV as Beeston hosted the University of Birmingham. Beeston went into the match one point behind the visitors on just six points, this match could be crucial for either side to try and pull away from the relegation playoffs. This has fallen kindly for Beast and Sophie Robinson's in the circle, fires the ball towards the goal, and what a terrific opening goal that is! All on her own, number 10 goal machine, Sophie Robinson with the opener. Beast and one, University of Birmingham nil, terrific stuff. Long blow of the umpire's whistle there. He's uh, indicating it's a beast and free hit. And they've gone with it quickly. It's popped up off the goalkeeper. And it's still live. And that is two for the beast and team. Terrific stuff. Umpire giving the advantage. Had two intricate ones. This is more straightforward. I'm sure that's just come off the post and that's flicked into the goal. The University of Birmingham are on the score sheet. Beeston two, University of Birmingham one. Another good run this one. Fired into the circle, patted away and then fired towards the goal again. Umpire having to duck out of the way. Always full of forward movement, but she's uh, decided, elected to give it up to McKee. McKee. Fire towards the goal, and so close, it's still live. Surely it is there. <laughs> Terrific finish. And straight through up the other end. Oh, what a stop on the line. Goalkeeper was beaten. There's a break on here. It's three on two at the back. Although lots of defensive support are making their way into possession. That's another foot there in the circle, I'm sure. Robinson, and that's smashed over the top of the bar. It could be a University of Birmingham player. Who stood out for you? That's all that matters. Things are opening up here again. Robinson steadies herself and fires it low and hard. Nicole Marks with her feet again. So these two teams will meet again very soon. Fernandez. Oh, what a pass. This surely should be a fourth. Goalkeeper's been pulled out and... Burrell doing very well, not quite converting it, long corner. McKee, turned over. Here go University of Birmingham again, that's a great pass as well. Cochrane's come out, she's come a long way, can this be turned in? It's hit the outside of the goal. And there it is, three points for Beeston. Three points in the bag, which moves them up from six points to nine points, leapfrogging University of Birmingham in the process. Next to league leader Surbiton, who still had a 100% record after eight matches. They entertain second-placed Hampstead and Westminster. Let's join Charlie Broom for all the action. Lovely corner, goes to the left-hand castle, the breakdown there is Sanders with a snapshot, 
And it's an early lead for Surbiton. Nine minutes in, Erica Sanders breaks the deadlock from a penalty corner. Another penalty corner to the left is Collins, the right is Ansley. It's Collins! And she whips it just past the post as we look. Ansley with the quick restart and there's a chance for a counter-attack here into the circle. Here is uh, McCaw on the shot is just past the far post. With a chance there for Hampstead on the break. Penalty corner. Ball's done on the far castle. Bias on this near side. The slip to Bias. And that's off the defender's stick. It's a long corner. Good work from Hampstead Westminster. Townsley's free hit into the circle. So I'm trying to get it clear. And they've got it as far as Munro. Munro. Going it forwards. And, well, it's been turned back over. And here is... Owsley, Owsley driving into the circle. Owsley, can she pull it back? Yes, she can. It's still there. Hands are in the air, but play on, says the umpire. The shot comes in and the save is made and Surbiton get the free out. Penalty corner. Again, it's Costello on the right and Bias on the left and they run that switch again and Costello makes way for Bias. He doesn't quite get it right. Hampstead and Westminster. Robertson. Loses possession, but wins it back again. Good work from Robertson. She's got support in front of her in the shape of Turner. Here is Turner. Turner gets the shot away. Good save. Still in the circle for Hampstead and Westminster. But Surbiton will get it clear. No, they won't. Back into the circle. Robertson again. Still going Robertson. Falls back to Robertson. Robertson on the reverse stick. And it's a great save. By Hesh down to her right-hand side. And in the end, the whistle blows. Ready! Hansley. And Collins stand at the top of the circle. It goes to Ansley. Giselle Ansley picks it up. And that is through for a second goal for Surbiton. 44 minutes in. A fourth goal of the season. 2-0. Here's Martin. Draws the foul. Martin taking the quick free hit. And Hampton Westminster having to do some backpedaling. It's still there. Still with Martin. Another free hit. Played into the circle. A chance here. Sanders with the shot. Good save. It rebounds to Sanders who finishes in the bottom corner. And Surbiton a 3-0 up. And with 20 minutes to play, are in the box seat in this one. And the corner. Sees Costello on the right. Bias on the left. And it comes to Costello. It's gone up in the air, so they're going to have to improvise here. Here is Bias playing it in. Good charge down. It falls to Owsley. And Owsley squeezes it in. And Hansen Westminster. Well, are they on the path of a comeback? Penalty corner again, Costello and Bias. Goes to Costello again, they switch it to Bias. Bias with a flick and that's not far wide. I think Owsley gets the final touch. Owsley driving up this right-hand side. Lily Owsley trying to make some magic happen if she can. And, uh, all across. Well, that's a very loose uh, pass and here's a chance for Hampstead and, Hampstead and Westminster. And this is a golden opportunity. The keeper's come a long way and the keeper is beaten. No one at home for Serbiton apart from Ansley who makes a crucial stop. Penalty corner. Now Costello on the left-hand side. Bias on the right. Costello with the drag flick. And that's wide of the mark. Well watched by the defence. Serbiton happy to play keep ball if they can. Here goes Owsley again, looking for a consolation as we come towards the final whistle. And there it goes, and Surbiton have beaten second place, Hampson and Westminster. Next to Clifton Robinsons for the visit of Loughborough students. Despite both teams being towards the foot of the table, they went into this in good form. Clifton having won two of their last three and Loughborough winning their last two. Tom Lush is talking you through this one. Loughborough students looking to exit down this left hand touchline that's been turned over inside Loughborough territory chance for Clifton Robinson's Phoebe Richards is all open in the middle here is Richards oh an audacious finish from the Clifton Robinson centre forward a scoop through the legs and the home side have the lead oh, mistrap from the corner it's good penalty corner defence in the end here they come again Oh, no. a much better trap. Oh, and a lovely, well-worked routine gives Lizzie Neal the simplest of opportunities to equalise for the visitors. 
One all. Lovely link up play. Link for Richards and the shot inches past the back post. Pierce trying to force it into the D. Play on, says the umpire. Pierce on the reverse. Batted away by Devissa. Fortunate for Clifton Robinsons that the keeper was alert to the danger. It all opened up for Madeline Pierce just to carry into the D easy as you like and get away a reverse stick shot. Here, straight away, come Clifton Robinsons. And it's all opened up for them right through the heart of the Loughborough defence. Players queuing up in the middle, and one of them is Claire Thomas. From one end of the pitch to the other, Claire Thomas gives Clifton Robinsons the lead. No, he's not. It's not that, that big a... Yeah, maybe. Straight to Millington's castle. Millington! Good, powerful flick from the Loughborough student. And she equalises with 15 minutes to go. Lots of numbers hovering around the edge of the D. The shot from Claire Thomas goes straight in. Miriam Pritchard, I think we bitterly disappointed. I'm not sure whether it took a touch in front of her. Regardless, Clifton Robinson's lead 3-2. And that is full time. Holcomb were at home to bottom of the table Bowden, having won their last two matches and beginning to look like getting back to the form of last season. Their visitors, on the other hand, had lost their last five and were four points adrift at the bottom. Free hit for Holcomb on that right-hand side and Wilkinson stands over it, pars it into Elliot. Elliot with a little touch to Daly and Daly first time! Beats Mackay and Holcomb have the lead inside 15 minutes. Holcomb won, Bowden nil. Welcome down in this left hand corner. This is uh, Davison. Davison has uh, given away the free hit, which uh, Nixon's going to take quickly. Nixon driving to the line. Nixon pulls it back, and there is Lewis to bring it away. Lewis, well, she's been dispossessed, and now Mares will have a go. Mares into the circle. Now here's a chance. Good save. It's rebounded, and it's in. What a finish from Mason. Bowden back on level terms. Holcomb won, Bowden won. Up this left-hand side, Wilkinson. Finds Davison, Davison driving to the circle. Manuel with a little lift and Davison! Oh, she skies it. And that's an opportunity gone. Now to the Holcomb left-hand side, fired in. And here is uh, a chance for Davison. Davison pulls it back. The keeper goes to ground. Manuel trying to lift it over. And there is uh, McDonald to get it away. But the whistle had already blown. Penalty corner for Holcomb. They go to the right-hand castle as we look. They look for the slip to the injector. Where is this going to fall to Manuel? No. Long corner. I'm having to play it round the back. Here is Mares. Up to that. Right hand side and forward it goes. And it's a restart for Bowden on the 23. Where are the options? Well, Mares is unmarked. Here is Mares. Mares. Lovely ball into Curran. And Curran still going. Curran on the reverse stick. And Curran finds the backboard. And Bowden are in front. Holcomb one. Bowden two. Penalty corner. Trunks to the left. Wilkinson to the right. Here is. Uh, Trunks to Wilkinson, and it's still there. Wilkinson on the reverse stick, and Mackay just pats it behind for a long corner. One last chance as it's fired in, looking for Crookshank. She can't get the touch. Mare's in front of it. A look at the watch, and there is the final whistle. And Bowden have only their second win of the season. It was fourth against fifth as Buckingham entertained East Grinstead. After a good start to the season, Buckingham had lost their last three games, whilst EG were the opposite and went into this one unbeaten in five.
There was one further match on Sunday as East Grinstead and Bowden played out a one-all draw. Sophie Bray put the home side ahead in the 8th minute with her ninth goal of the season, but a Sean French penalty stroke levelled it up just before half-time. So this is how the table looks at the halfway stage. Surbiton have a huge 8 point gap at the top over Hampstead and Westminster, but the race for the playoffs below them is tightening up. Bowden's good weekend means they're now just one point off the bottom, with Beeston jumping up and out of the relegation playoff spot. Our first match in the men's Premier Division is a repeat of last year's playoff final as Surbiton played Hampstead and Westminster. Surbiton had won all seven of their matches so far, averaging no less than six goals a game. Let's join up with Charlie Broom once more. Now, here's an early opportunity perhaps for uh, Surbiton. Salisbury feeding it in to Wallace. Wallace now into the circle. There's a chance here. And a far save. It's for Scythe. Scores at the far post. 23 seconds on the clock. And Surbiton are in front. Brown. Can Hampson Westminster find a way back into this game? Off that early goal, here is French inside the circle. French playing it to the near post and Shipley with a beautiful run across the face of goal gets the touch and Hampson Westminster can respond. Aerial ball, pulled down by Gore. Play forward to Salisbury, who wins the free hit. Salisbury takes it quickly, still going Tom Salisbury. And that's a lovely little ball into Goodfield. Goodfield on the reverse stick and Goodfield restores serve to lead. 12 minutes in, Surbiton 2, Hampstead and Westminster 1. What a start to this game. Penalty corner, Brown on the left, Castle. Guys Brown on the right, they've swapped over. He goes to Guys Brown, who picks it up and puts it straight through the goalkeeper's legs. Surbiton 2, Hampstead and Westminster 2, 16 minutes only on the clock. Penalty corner, Royce and Taylor swap at the top of the circle. And it goes to Royce, Royce with a drag flick, good save by Reynolds Cottrell, but they haven't got it clear. Hampstead Westminster back in it goes. Royce steps back and Royce slots in under Reynolds Cottrell to make it Surbiton three, Hampstead Westminster two. Penalty corner this time. Taylor on the left-hand castle and it goes to Taylor. Taylor picks it up and scores. 4-2 now to Surbiton. Penalty corner. Brown, Guys Brown, again at the top of the circle. Guys Brown scores 4-3, 35 minutes in. How many goals are we going to get in this one? Ball played back. Here is Taylor. Taylor plays the ball forward. Well, it's mishandled by Hampson Westminster. Serving could be in here. Shot comes in, saves. Where's that going to go? side. another good save. Shot comes in under the foot penalty stroke. Right, here's a really golden opportunity for Serbiton to get a... Two goal cushion. Forsyth against Reynolds Cottrell. And Forsyth comes out on top. 5 3. Serves a lead. 40 minutes in. Cargo stands over the ball. Again, Brown and Guys Brown at the top. It goes to Brown. Brown looking for the deflection, and Cargo is there to apply it. 5 4. 48 minutes in. What a cracking final 22 minutes we will get here. Ball down this left-hand side for Surbiton into the circle. Little touch. And, well, that's a poor clearance by Reynolds Cottrell. And Surbiton could be in again here. Ball across. And there is Boone to tap into an empty net. And that surely means the points are safe. 6-4 Surbiton lead. Well, Hampstead, if we're drawn their keeper chasing this game. And Surbiton have won a free hit. Opportunity knocks for another goal, you feel. The aerial ball aimed for Boone. Hampstead managed to deal with the ball, but Boone steals it back, and this could be a chance here. Boone unmarked, and he scores. Another goal for Ben Boone. Two in two minutes. 7 4. Another free hit, and uh, Smith has mishandled, and while well, desperate defending gives away the penalty stroke. Taylor against Reynolds Cottle. He's had a busy afternoon. He goes the wrong way and Luke Taylor makes it 8-4 in the last minute. Brown throws the ball forward to Calman, who brings it down. Free hit to Hampstead Westminster on the edge of the circle. Calman, well, 
Once the free hit, didn't think it, the defence was five, but that's the final whistle and it's all over. And it's a comprehensive victory for the leaders, Surbiton. Next, it's fifth versus third, with Holcomb hosting Old Georgians. The home side were looking for a win to stop their slide down the table, having not won in four previous fixtures. OGs were also looking for a good performance to make amends for their first defeat last time out against Surbiton. Holcomb in the red, who's just won the ball back of OGs in the sky blue. Barry Middleton, former GB and England captain, allowed to turn. And Holcomb sensing an opportunity here into the OGD and a sliding Rob Field gives the home side the lead incredibly inside the first minute. Chance for OGs to break shingles, not many options ahead of him. Just a red wall and Barry Milton is one of those players in red to win it back. Milton linking it with Field, he's got Bandarak ahead of him, if you can find him, Bandarak roofs Holcomb second. What a start for the home team. Old Georgie in for the chance to strike straight back. It goes to Carson's Castle and he puts it in off the other side of the crossbar. Plenty of movement out the top of the D. Goes to Sanford Castle. Carson through the keeper and Andy Ball finished it off. Certainly was a mistake by the goalkeeper, but Andy Ball was alert to the opportunity and equalises for the visitors. Turned over in midfield and now there are plenty of options ahead of the ball for all Georgians. One of them is James Tyndall. One on one against Robbins. Oh, and he's breezed past him and leathered it past Curtis. What a way to take the lead. James Tyndall, take a bow. Here is Tyndall again. Can't give him a yard of space because he will punish you. Old Georgians extend their lead. They were 2 0 down and now they are 4 2 ahead. Charles for Holcomb's penalty corner attack team to pull one back. Mark Cleghorn, powerful flick just above the backboard. 3 4 now. James Aubrey looking to carry out from the back. He's got options in midfield. They won the ball for a minute, Holcomb, but it is an old Georgians free hit. Chance down the right hand touchline. Ball played in. Good initial save and scrambled clear. But only as far as Tom Carson. Mark Leghorn holds his head in his hands. He just passed Carson the ball. Carson gleefully tucked home OG Spith. Leghorn with a chance to pull one back with the last player of the game, and he does. From one end of the table to the other, as Brooklyn's Manchester University played Reading. Reading went into this one having picked up just the two draws so far, whilst the home side had two wins under their belt. Brooklyn's Manchester University pushing Reading back deep as they set up a high line. Lush picks it up at fullback and looks forward into the D. Tom Lush finds David Flanagan linking up with his partner in crime, Carres, and Flanagan gets Brooklyn's first. After a spell out, with a hamstring injury, David Flanagan is straight back onto the score sheet. Very kind of Richard Slater to let it roll over the line. High pressure again from Brooklyn, forcing Reading into midfield. Ray Hills up against Paddy Scott. And Ray Hills with the help of Leo Watson have won here. The ball back for Brooklyn. Watson streaking into the D. Heavy challenge and it is a stroke. Paddy Scott desperate to get back and defend and this might be even more trouble for Reading as the players crowd around the umpire. I can see yellow cards being brandished left, right and centre. David Flanagan gets his and Brooklyn second. <clears throat> Reading now down to nine men. Spaces opening up all over the pitch for Brooklyn. Peter Flanagan down the baseline. Good save. David Flanagan with another shot. Oh, and it's off the post as well. 
Chaos inside the D. It was Peter Flanagan driving the baseline. That caused all the problems initially. Weaver made a couple of smart saves. Flanagan looking for his third. Batatessa hit the post and then Weaver got across to keep it at 2-0. Still 2-0 to Brooklyn's Manchester University. Reading back 2-11 men. Sam Perrin winning the free hit midfield and Perrin is off. Sam Perrin as he does so often bulldozing his way into the D. It's laid up by Sutcliffe to David Flanagan to pick up his third. A hat trick for Flanagan in the first half. It all started with Sam Perrin's driving run. Sutcliffe just laid it off and Flanagan first time on the volley. Secures his first half hat trick. Loose ball in midfield, Reading have gathered it. And maybe a chance for them to break. Alex Oxborough, one on one in the D, onto his reverse. Good save from Robbie Turner. <laughs> Reading, here they come again. Paddy Scott, another good chance for Reading to pull one back. Closed down by the defender. Golden opportunity for Reading, goes a miss again. Ellison and Turner again with the save, stretching out his right hand this time. Ball seemed destined for the top corner. Had it not been for Brooklyn's impressive goalkeeper, acrobatically away, maintains their lead at 3-0. Into the closing stages. Now, Brooklyn's have weathered a Reading storm and now have a chance to break through Tom Russell. Russell, pass Ellison. Tom Russell! Four for Brooklands. And what a way to finish off the day. Tom Russell dancing inside the Reading defenders and smashing it into the roof of the net. Tremendous skill by the young forward. He peels away in celebration. Not being Reading's day and it might go from bad to worse. Sam Perrin is off again. He's got Batatessa ahead of him. If he can find him, it is Will Batatessa. Round the goalie and off the post for the second time. Will Batatessa strikes the upright. Final play of the game. Reading chasing a consolation goal. And in all the melee in front of turn, I think it's Kieran O'Connell who has squeezed in a goal finally for Reading. Brooklyn's can't keep the clean sheet, but end up victorious for one. Unbeaten Wimbledon travel to East Grinstead looking to continue their push towards the top of the table. For the home side, it was a case of trying to pick up a win to try and keep pace with the top four after an inconsistent start to the season. Down this left-hand side for East Grinstead and battling hard to keep it alive. Here comes the cross and the chance here. Oh, what a goal from Chris Griffiths. The first time reverse stick shot finds the back of the net. Here is Roper. Roper and uh, Stodd has gone to ground and it's given Haller a little bit of space. Haller into the circle, it comes off Emmett's stick and it's into the back of the goal and it's one all seven minutes in. It's a penalty corner. Haller to the left, Roper to the right. And it's gone to Haller. Haller, good save by Smith. Back to Haller and Haller beats Smith at the second time of asking and Wimbledon are in front 2-1. Here is... Griffiths, Griffiths driving in and just dropping it out, ball in, finds its way to Holland, Holland battling, Holland, can he get it across the face of goal, still going Holland, good work, he does get it across the face of goal and there is David Condon to get the equaliser, East Grinstead 2, Wimbledon 2, 40 minutes in, Holland to the left hand castle, a little switch, Fancies his chances from this right-hand side and he gets the flick away and off the top of Smith's kicker into the roof of the net and Wimbledon are back in front, 47 minutes in. 
This is Emmett. Emmett driving up to the halfway, finds the pass inside and Griffiths leading down into that left-hand pocket. Here is Chris Griffiths. Griffiths driving along the goal line. He's got Piper in front of him. He wants him and he finds the side netting. Unlucky from Chris Griffiths. Around the back, Wimbledon will go. Have a little look up this right-hand side. There's the ball across. And, oh, it's gone all the way through to Francis. Francis on the reverse stick and he squeezed it between post and keeper. And Wimbledon lead by four goals to two with just six minutes remaining. Penalty corner for East Grinstead. Faulkner on the left hand castle. Liam Ansel to the right. And East Grinstead need to try and get something from this penalty corner if they can to try and get something from the game overall. Which castle will it go to? Ansel or Faulkner? Goes to Faulkner. Faulkner looking for the deflection off Van Grossen. And Van Grossen gets that deflection and they've got two minutes or so to try and find the equaliser. Ball into the circle, looking for the final touch. Not there. There is the final whistle. And it's Wimbledon who take the spoils. Final score, East Grinstead 3, Wimbledon 4. The University of Exeter were at home to Beeston with just one point between them. This match could go a long way towards who would end up struggling at the end of the season. There were two further matches on Sunday. League leaders Surbiton travelled to second place Wimbledon and took the lead at half-time through Zach Wallace. Jack Waller equalised for the home side early in the second half, but Alan Forsyth's 11th goal of the season late on gave Surbiton all three points. Hampstead and Westminster picked up a comfortable win at home to East Grinstead thanks to first half goals from Matt Guys brown and Chris Cargo and also a last minute goal from Rupert Shipperley. So this is how the men's Premier Division looks. Surbiton now have a six point lead with a game in hand over Wimbledon, with Old Georgians a further point back. Hampstead and Westminster round out that top four. At the bottom, a little gap has opened up, leaving the University of Exeter and Reading in real trouble. That's it for this week. Join us again next week for another Monday Night Hockey.